Okay, this is as good as it's gonna get. Exhausted, not motivated, and no, I'm not talking about my current state of being. If you have any of these feelings for Final Fantasy XIV and wanna know what other activities you can do, then keep on watching. Make sure to stay tuned to the end where I list my favorite thing to do as well as the most amazing website that I found for this particular activity and just for the game in general. Hello guys, my name is Stefan Ash and I have another Final Fantasy video for you today. I have been on the community pages a lot and I noticed that a lot of people are talking about burnout just because of the recent events and a lot of the other things that go on in Final Fantasy XIV all of the time. I want to make myself clear that Yoshi P himself said that if you are experiencing true burnout, then why not step away from the game for about a month or two in order to realign yourself and kind of break up your routine. He wants people to enjoy the game and not feel like they have to log in or play every single day. But with that being said, if you just want some other in-game activities that you can do, then I have four things that you can do either while you're leveling up the main story or at the end when you're done doing all your relics and everything else in the game that can range from grindy and super fun. It just kind of depends on the mood you're in. As always, if you get any value out of this video, then hit that limit break three and subscribe down below. Number one is going to be really obvious, but leveling up your other jobs to level 80. I just recently leveled up all my jobs to level 80 and I've had so much fun learning all of the job rotations as well as just general knowledge for those jobs. And I think it's actually made me a better player because now I understand a lot of buff timers and a lot of what the other jobs give to the party. There are only two main ways to really level up efficiently and you can do duty roulettes or bows in front. If you haven't started bows in front, this would be a good time to start and getting each of your jobs to level 80 using that. And the story is absolutely amazing. Be warned though, you can only start bows in front or Zadnor I'm sure I'm not saying that correctly, with a job level of 71 or above. Again, I do recommend bows in front as you are killing two birds with one stone. Number two has become one of my absolute favorites and that is the beast tribes. For beast tribes, you are able to do 12 dailies a day each beast tribe gives you about three dailies and so doing basic maths that's probably about four you can do a day unless you have to level one up then you get an extra three for that one honestly some of my favorite side stories are the beast tribes another fun fact is some of the beast tribes have mounts and minions that are attached to them some of my favorites being pixie beast tribe or the dwarven beast tribe Something in Stormblood was the Ananta Beast Tribe because they have the White Elephant and the Griffin Mount, which are some of my favorites. And of course, I have to mention the Tank Mount. The Mini Tank Mount is my absolute favorite mount right now. I've been using it a lot, so. But that's the cool thing is that when you get a lot of mounts, you can just mix and do a roulette of them and never get tired of it. Be aware that some of the beast tribes do require crafting and gathering. So if you don't have those, you won't be able to do those particular beast tribes. You can only do the pixie beast tribe with a battle class, but a fun fact is that it is really a good way to level up jobs if you do the beast tribes every day. The really cool thing that I like about beast tribes is that some are gathering and some are battle classes or some are crafting. It kind of fits my mood. So whatever I feel like working on that day, I can work on and don't feel like I'm not utilizing everything properly. So if I feel like doing battle classes, then I'll do the Ananta or the Pixie or some of the other ones. I haven't done all of them yet. If I feel like crafting or gathering, then I do the Dwarven beast tribe or or the Namazu, which is another one of my favorites. Another great thing is that each beast tribe has currency and usually has really good rewards. Dwarven beast tribe, for example, has slither sand. Slither sand you need in order to make crafting and gathering armor. Since you can only do a few a day, it really helps break up that regular routine that you get when you log in. Number three the gold saucer. I am having so much fun in the gold saucer, all sorts of games and things you can do. A pro tip is unlock triple triad early on when you start the game, because a lot of the bosses that you play through when going through the main story drop cards. So when you get duplicate cards, you can just sell them for MGP points. Why do you want MGP points? Well, because there's so many rewards that you can get some with the most amazing mount I'm working towards right now, the Fenrir. I haven't gotten it yet, but I haven't really been working towards it. I've just been selling my extra cards that I get as well as doing the daily cact pot, cact pot, the daily cact pot. 
where you pick the little letters and numbers and you can get a 10,000 MGP. Funnily enough, when I was making this video, I did get 10,000 MGP for that. And so that's just really exciting. There are also some events in the gold saucer. I haven't really worked up the courage to do them, but they're really super fun to watch. Number four, this is one that I didn't realize that is so easy to do and it's a lot of instant gratification and that is mount and minion hunting. So there's a lot of things that you can do in the game that are super easy like extreme trials unsynced level 50 garuda level 50 ifrit leviathan and they all drop mounts and a lot of content actually has mounts associated with it a lot of that level 50 and un extreme unsynced has horses that are colored and they play the music from that trial which you have to get the shiva one obviously because that's the best one there are also side quests that you can do one being an aliport where it'll get you a cat and a dog minion and like i said this is so amazing it's so instant gratification it only takes a few minutes and you can farm mounts farm minions and they're everywhere in the game and you're wondering how do I know where to look or what to find well my favorite website is the blue collect website for Final Fantasy 14 you can log in with your discord and you can track what you have collected so once you log in you can see where you obtain that mount or that minion it shows you right in the website and then once you obtain it you can hit collect the fun thing about this is it shows you from the people who use the website of how many people actually have that mount or minion. So it's really fun to try to get the ones that only 7% of the people have or 10% of the people. Even though it's not an accurate for the entire game, it's still kind of fun. Again, instant gratification, and it only takes a couple of minutes for each of these mounts for some of the easy ones. And you can start working towards some of the harder ones if you know what you're looking for. This is not sponsored. I just really love that website. It is so much fun to use. And it's not just mounts or minions, it shows everything. So I really recommend it for beginner players, casual players, and even veteran players who didn't know about it. Thank you for watching my video. Before I go, if you're into social media and things, then you can follow me down on Instagram. Instagram down below. I as well have an Instagram gamer dudes with my fiance and you can follow us there. And lastly, I do have a discord for my community. If you just want to be part of a community that's really helpful and will help you answer any questions or maybe run content, then you can join that down below too. The link is in the description box. I do this at the end of the video because I don't like feeling pushy. So I just do it at the end because most people don't watch till the end. Either way, if you want to watch more Final Fantasy 14 videos, then you can click here.